everybody. This is Joseph from Joe Concepts. Um, today, I want to quickly talk about soft body dynamics. And in the past weeks, we've been looking at dynamics and we've looked at uh, spline dynamics. We've looked at um, basic rigid body dynamics. So, so, so today, we're going to be looking at uh, soft body dynamics. So be before we go into the tutorials, I would like to please tell you to like my videos and share it because it helps me and if you have not subscribed to my channel please do subscribe because i do tutorials like this every week so let's get into the tutorial and see what we can do about soft body dynamics here in cinema 4d i'm going to start by creating a plane object i'm going to scale this up so i'm using the shortcut t for scale or you could just call me so this is um, then I'm going to create a cube object. So this cube object, let me just scale this down a little bit and E for move, move this up a little bit. So this is the basic setup that I'm going to look at and see what sub body dynamics will work on this object. So basically, if I select this plane, so I want to get rid of this grid so it doesn't distract me. So I'm going to go to the filter grid. That goes up. So basically everything now is plain and I can see my object well. So if I select this plane and right click, go to new tag, I will go to simulation tags, then I will go to select collider body. So the purpose why I'm doing this is to make this plane a collider object so that this cube can collide with this. So this is what we're going to be adding the dynamics to. So once we select the cube, so you right click, go to new tag and go over to your simulation. What you want is soft body. So if I click on soft body, so that is pretty much the two tags we need. We need the collider body on what we want to collide with and the soft body on the object we want to add that simulation on. So basically what soft body does is it, it tries to simulate um, an object, making it more like soft so when 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 i say soft an example is when you have a balloon that is filled with um water you drop the balloon you notice it compresses and comes back um to shape so that kind of effect is um soft body unlike when you drop a, a golf ball you notice there is no form of um, compression on that object so that form of simulation will be probably will be a uh, rigid body actually not actually probably so will be rigid body so that's what we want to try to simulate here we want to make this a soft object so that when it falls down it should compress a little and try to come back to its shape so once you have this set all you need to do is just play if you play notice what happens the object just falls and we don't see any of the compression and the reason why we don't see this compression is because this is trying to create a form of um it's trying to bend an object but it's not really bending this because of the number of segments we have so if i open uh, my paints and try to illustrate this when you have an object when you have this is more like the pins that makes up this object. You try to bend it so we can make this, give an example of this to be more like a, a pen. So when you have a pen that has its um, head, you try to bend this pen. Sorry, don't mind my drawing. You notice it's kind of hard for you to bend the pen. The reason is because the structure of this pen is so hard that you cannot bend it. But if you now look at um, uh, my finger, for instance, oh, I'm sorry about this. Ah, God, <laughs> I'm drawing so badly. Um, the reason I'm having this issue is because I'm trying to use my mouse to do that. My graphics tablet is not here. So you try to bend this finger. You notice that this finger can bend at this junction and also at this junction. And the reason why you see that bend is because there is a segment here which will permit that bend. So the same way goes with this. If you try to simulate the soft body object, it tries to look for segment for it to bend. So when it doesn't see segment, it acts like 
a collider or it acts like a rigid object so I, I hope if that makes sense so for me to see the structure of this cube I'll go to my display Gora shading with line the shortcut is NB so this shows you the structure and the uh, segments so if I select this cube and replace this just bring this back and add some segments here so if I add three 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 just let's start with this and I play Notice what happens. I, I don't know if you saw that. There's a form of bending somewhere here. So I'm going to replace. So you just see. See what happens. This bends. And the degree of bend you have will be determined by the number of segments you have. And mind you, please, this is more like a, a warning. By the time you go to a particular number of segments, you notice that your playback becomes slow. So you don't want to get too far with this and also don't want to be too low. Now I'm going to show you how to compensate for when you use a very small value just for your feedback, playback to come up. So if I bring up, bring this up to six by six by six and I try to do the simulation, you notice that the rate of bend will be more. You can already see that. So the rate of bend here is now more compared to when we had one, all right? So if I bring this to, let's say, 12 by 12 by 12 and replace, you notice that it slows down. The rate at which the playback comes slows down. And also, this crumbles on itself. And the reason why this is crumbling on itself is because all these Bends have been calculated for, so it's bending. So you can just see each of these more like a spring. So this is a spring, this is another spring. So the whole springs are crumbling on, their, on themselves. And the reason why this spring crumbles is because the structure of the spring is not that hard. So we need to compensate for this and increase some of the settings here. So if I go to the subbody tag, and I go to the soft body. This is where we want to do the whole thing. So we look at the spring section. So the spring is made up of three forces. So we have the structure, we have the shear, and we have the flexion. So these are the things that will determine how um, this becomes hard. So if we come to the structure to start with and increase this to 200, replay and play again, you notice that it tries to come up again but still looking more like water so what you will be doing here is to walk play with these values and see the effect you have so if you crank up this is 200 sorry to 100 and also 100 these are the share and the flexion and try and play this you notice the rate at which it goes down is not as before so if we bring this up to 200 and also this to 200 and see the replay that we're going to have. You are going to see that it tries to come up. So the, you also do not want to start changing values here. So by the time you get to a particular value, there is another thing you can change and that is the stiffness here. So if I want to make the structure harder than this, I can compensate for this with the structure stiffness. So if I bring the stiffness to let's say something 20 to start with and play, you notice what happens. So it kind of stiffened this. So this becomes a little bit stiff. And notice why we're having this artifact just because of the number of segments. So we will always come back to solve that. So if we bring this up to let's say 50 and play, notice so we're having this issue playing by itself working so we can always go back so for me to compensate and solve that issue of this sliding by itself what we need to do is go to the render setting control or command d then we'll go over to the dynamic section go to the expert we want to increase the step by frame so let's say we want to increase it to 20 and the collision I'm going to have 0 0.01, so that's just the collision margin between the object and the collider. So then the threshold, error threshold, we could just leave this. So let's just say four. Let's just say four. 
just to say and let's play this back and see the effects we get so you notice the time it plays it's kind of slow and you notice that the issue we had is solved so but then if you play this again you notice that this becomes too stiff so for me to also still do that i have to go back to the tag and start changing the values here so if i bring this back to 100 and possibly 150 150 and let's see so more what we're doing is to work on the um, spring forces so if you play this you notice the effect so you can always come back so let's bring this back to 100 and if i still do not get the effects i want then i have to come back to the stiffness and reduce the stiffness so you can already see that if you bring the stiffness back to 25 and play this you notice that this becomes slow now and the stiffness is working more so let's say this to be five and we play yes so you can already see the effects jiggling effects of the subject so the more jiggle you want just reduce the stiffness so if you want more jiggle just bring the stiffness down and that falls down and bounces up and it goes a little bit before it comes to rest so notice the rate at which this thing comes to rest it comes to rest so fast if you want it to jiggle more that can be done with the damping so the damping are more like the rate at which it comes back to rest all right so if i bring this to let's say half of this 10 10 10 and replay this you notice that the rate at which it comes back to rest will be twice as what we had before so it bounces up and comes down bounces until it gradually comes to rest if i bring this to 100 all of them so what i usually try to do is to make sure all the values are equal so i bring that to 100 and see the effect we're going to have so you notice that it doesn't really it comes to rest very fast so that is what damping does so if i bring this to three 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 so the rate at this will come back to rest will not be that so it goes down pushes itself up comes down so that's what the damping does for this song but you notice my playback time so i can also compensate for that by coming back here and reducing this so if i bring this eight by eight by eight so the playback time should be a lot faster all right so i think this is fine all right so let's go back to the tag other settings you have here if you come down here we've looked at stiffness the volume then the rest length tells you how um, percentage of the initial object that it should come back to so the rest length should be the default is 100 that means it comes back to initial length if we want the rest length to be half this length then we should just say 50 percent and play that so once this thing bounces and it rests and tries to come so we don't really see that effect here so So let's look at um, the pressure. So the shape conservation is more like you try to get the shape back. Then what else? The volume, what does it do? So let's bring this down. That's how I learn. Just bring values down and see what effect I have. So you already see, don't really have an effect. But there's one more setting I want to show you on the pressure. So what the pressure does is to uh, inflate the object so if I bring this pressure up to let's say 50 before it falls down it deflates it and falls down so you can already see so you can use this to create more like uh, a balloon object so if we bring this up to 200 and play so you see that so this start giving you that feel of a soft object bouncing and all that so that is um it for that so you also know what damping does already by now then if you come back to the soft body type 
we have you can turn off the soft body here so it acts more like a rigid body sorry i started there before coming then if you you can also so the default was made by polygon so it acts based on the polygons you have then you have your made of clone so this is used for a cloned object all right so let's see this elastic limit i will bring this back to zero so the elastic limit here the elastic limit we have here is 1000 on the structure so let's bring this to zero and play where you don't really get to have any changes here. so please like i would always say if you feel you know some things about this please do put them in the description so everybody can learn from that so these are basically all the settings that i use for my um soft body dynamics so um, I just, you can just play around with some of the settings and see the effects you get to have and you can just put whatever you've done in the description so we can all learn and see what can be done so i think i'm going to stop this tutorial here in the next video i'm going to be working with um, a more complex object that has very many polygons and how you can um, solve that oh by the way i said at the end of the story i'm going to show you a way to work with more polygons and still make sure that your playback time is not slowed down just like this so so what can we do if we want to have more polygons we want this to be smooth and we don't want the playback time to be more than that than what we have then you can just put this object in a subdivision surface so what happens what this means now is that the software is only going to be calculating this dynamics on this polygon not on this so if you play it's still the same time that you have so you have your detailed object and it doesn't really affect the um, animation time so what you need to do take out from here is that when you're adding um, sub body just add it to a low poly object and put that object in a subdivision surface and that should work well so i think i'm going to stop this tutorial here and in the next tutorial we're going to look at creating a project with uh, the sub body dynamics so once more please like my video share it uh, because it helps me a lot and if you are new to this channel please do subscribe to my channel because i do similar tutorials as this. So do have a wonderful day and God bless you. Bye.